Last week, Zack Snyder made an appearance on the Joe Rogan Experience and gave his thoughts on Batman and what made the character special and how you get him right and why he's insignificant to modern day storytelling because people refuse to let him murder. Batman should be a killer because everything is so grimy and dirty nowadays. If you had a real Batman on the streets, he would be forced to murder people to exact justice. And uh, this is a terrible take. It's one of the reasons that the DCEU never really worked out. He got the foundation completely incorrect in Man of Steel, and then he got the first floor incorrect with Batman versus Superman. And I don't know why he was working on the second floor. They decided to boot him off, you know, with Justice League and all that stuff. You know, he got some castings right, but he never really got the characters right. And thankfully, there are people reacting to this, and we got a lot of reactions actually from comic pros, a lot of which have had a thing or two to do with Batman and the greatness of the character, especially in modern times. We even got Dan Slott chiming in when dan slot is able to tell you that you are stupid you have clearly reached uh, stupid status and that is basically what happened to zach snyder as he's being eviscerated by comic bros a lot of whom are pretty well associated with the batman character himself let's hear from grant morrison if batman killed his enemies he'd be the joker and commissioner gordon would have to lock him up that batman puts himself in danger every night but steadfastly refuses to murder is an essential element of the character's magnificent Horrendous childlike psychosis wrote Morrison in his latest newsletter. The line Bruce Wayne draws is a clear delineation between himself and his villains. And if Batman were to ever cross it, there would be no difference between them. That is absolutely correct. Once Batman decides to murder, he's basically become the Joker himself. And that's kind of something that Joker has wanted to do to Batman. Make him cross that line and show Batman, you're no better than me. You're just a villain. Uh, that's disguised himself as a superhero, but we all know that that is not the case. You know, and Batman has been around for over 80 years, and for almost all of that, the no-kill rule and no-using-guns rule have been very important parts or foundational elements of the Batman character. And the Batman character remains, to this day, the most popular comic book character out there. It's the best-selling ongoing series and has been for a long time. Anytime you put Batman on the big screen, people go and see it. It doesn't matter who you put underneath the cow. You can put the guy from freaking Twilight. That's right. This shiny, sparkly vampire guy can play Bruce Wayne, put on the cow, and people are still interested in Batman. He's that over with people, and I think most people recognize that not killing is an essential part of who Batman is. Now, I don't personally agree with every Grant Morrison take on the Batman character. I don't think that Batman should be the Bat God that Grant Morrison likes to implement, where he's got a contingency plan for everybody. And he could defeat Superman if he needed to, and he could defeat Wonder Woman. And he knows the weaknesses of everybody, not only his villains, but also his allies. And he has a way to defeat them as well. I don't personally like the Bat God take. I don't like the Joker is secretly in love with Batman and would like to be in a relationship with him. That's something Grant Morrison has certainly leaned into, but those aren't foundational elements of the Batman character. Those are kind of foundational elements of Grant Morrison's take on the character, which certainly differs from other people. But he realizes you can't actually break the core of the character. Otherwise, you're not really writing Batman at that point. Zack Snyder has said, well, he's really drawing inspiration from Dark Knight Returns because Batman in that comic book from Frank Miller certainly uses a gun. And some people would tell you that Dark Knight Returns is the greatest Batman story of all times. I would certainly disagree with that. I think Batman Year One is a better Batman story. I think Batman The Long Halloween is a better Batman story. And I would say even um, Strange Apparitions is a better Batman story. Just my take, there are better Batman stories out there than The Dark Knight Returns. Obviously, that's probably the most famous one or at least up there. And yes, Batman does break out a gun and aims it at a guy that's holding a girl hostage or whatever, and he does shoot him. Apparently, in Zack Snyder's mind, he murders him. I don't think that's anyone's real take on that particular moment. It was a fuck me moment. It was like, oh, God, I can't believe I would see Batman pull out a gun. But that's even Elseworlds. It's not actually in canon. That is not the actual Batman himself. That's a darker, grimmer version of Batman in the future that isn't supposed to be a part of canon, and I think that's where a lot of people make mistakes when they're trying to understand who the Batman character is. Grant Morrison kind of sets them straight there. Next up, we heard from Mark Miller. Heroes can kill, superheroes don't. That's the difference between Bond, Captain Kirk, and Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, etc. It's not just the costumes. And that is a really good point, because certainly there are heroes out there that kill. You know, you see on the big screen, I remember Arnold Schwarzenegger in the late 80s and 90s, 
Every single action movie he made was absolutely amazing. And he murdered so many people in there. So many bad guys died uh, because of Arnold Schwarzenegger and all the characters that he was portraying. You know, other than Terminator, where he was certainly the bad guy in that particular one. You know, Sylvester Stallone was another huge action star. We had John Claude Van Damme. Uh, who else do we have out there? Who was a uh, uh, Steven Seagal? Obviously, all those heroes in action movies did kill, but they weren't superheroes. Even a character like Punisher, who is a part of the Marvel Universe, you don't really consider him a superhero. He's an anti-hero. He is a hero of his own right, but he has crossed that line. He's lost the moral clarity of a character like a Batman or a character like a Daredevil to where he is willing to murder. And I do think Mark Miller gets that kind of stuff. He certainly in incorporated it very heavily into Civil War, where we had that moment where you had Punisher wanting to join up with Captain America's team. And Captain America's like, no, we are not the same. I'm a superhero. You're a vigilante out there that's killing people. You are not allowed to act like you and I are fighting for the same thing because you have crossed lines that superheroes do not cross. And I think Mark Miller put that into the comic book absolutely on purpose to delineate that while, yes, Punisher is a really cool character, and there's nothing wrong with liking Punisher and seeing him as a hero, there's an enormous difference between Punisher and a character like Captain America or something like a Superman, which are more aspirational heroes, because he has crossed that dark line. And I personally believe, and this is just my headcanon, this isn't uh, established by DC Comics, by writers and stuff like that, that if Batman ever did cross the line because he is so heavily invested in his mission and he is so heavily invested in protecting the people of Gotham and his family and stuff like that, that if he ever did kill, he would become a serial killer because then he would be able to justify it in his mind. And we know that Batman is completely dedicated to the mission. He will fight to the death. He will literally go out there until he has no energy left. He will not eat, he will not sleep until he gets the job done. And if he thought part of the job meant killing people, he would start murdering everybody. His body count would likely be just as high as Joker in very short order as he started justifying the action itself. So he knows that he can't cross the line because if he did, he might actually become addicted to murder. And that's one of the cool things about the character, at least in my own headcanon, the way I see Batman personally. Obviously, a lot of these writers don't see him the same way Zack Snyder does. Another creator, not a writer so much, certainly he has written, but nor known as a, an artist, very, very associated with Batman is Graham Nolan. He said, one of the most ignorant quotes about Batman I've ever heard. It also explains the stupid death of Pa Kent and Superman having to kill Zod and Man of Steel. Dude doesn't understand the core of the character. And I do think this is a fundamental core element of why Zack Snyder's DCEU didn't work and why people are pushing back so hard on his stance that if Batman isn't allowed to kill, he's irrelevant because he's not a character that could actually exist in the real world. If we think about what Graham Nolan and his association with Batman is, obviously the, the best known story and one of the greatest Batman stories ever told in a story I would probably say is better than Dark Knight Returns. It's right up there with it. It's, it's among the greatest Batman stories of all time, Nightfall. Obviously a lot of great creators associated with Nightfall, Graham Nolan being one of the primary artists. In that story you know under the guise of bane and his big plan he releases all the villains out into gotham all at one time just to see what he can do to break batman not just break him physically not but also to break him mentally what's it going to take for him to say you know what screw it it's time to start murdering there's so much stuff going on there's so much mayhem that i can't follow my own rules and i will lose my own moral clarity and i will stoop down to bane's level or Joker's level, or Riddler's level, all that kind of stuff. And guess what happens by the end of Nightfall? Or at least, I guess, in the middle of Nightfall, because Nightfall lasts for a long time, even after the moment where Batman gets his back broken, after he's so physically exhausted and so mentally exhausted, but never, ever took the shortcut, took the easy road to actually start murdering the actual criminals that were out there in Gotham that he had put away and then obviously Bane and let out. He would literally fight to the death kill his own body physically before he resorted to murder. I think that was a powerful statement about the Batman character of what he is and what his moral clarity is and why he is an amazing superhero and why he is the right man to protect the people of Gotham, one of the dirtiest, nastiest cities in the history of fiction. Just a wonderful interpretation of Batman, and I can understand why it pisses Graham Nolan off and chaps his ass because he is somebody that put his blood, sweat, and tears into that Batman character, 
and to see somebody just so fundamentally misunderstand the purpose of the character, but he didn't even understand Superman. That's how, I don't know what jaded, cynical, the mind of Zack Snyder is. He didn't even understand having Pa Kent tell Clark, maybe you shouldn't save people because it could be dangerous for you. A very selfish act, allowing himself to just die there when Superman could have just went and saved him very, very easily. Resort Having Superman resort to, to murdering Zod and say, maybe I shouldn't be protecting these people. Maybe they're not worth it. Terrible, terrible takes on Superman, who, of course, is the foundational element of all these superheroes. You know, Superman is the first hero that really took off and is the benchmark of superheroes everywhere. And Zack Snyder just didn't get that. I think he's so enamored with Watchmen and character deconstruction. And Watchmen is a brilliant book. It's absolutely fantastic. And he did probably as good as an interpretation as you could ever do of the comic book material on movies. Zack Snyder did. The first two minutes with the Bob Dylan song was some of the best cinematic visual storytelling I've ever actually seen in a movie without really any dialogue or anything like that. It told a wonderful story. And then it just kind of falls apart under the weight of the story itself that probably was never meant to be put on the big screen. But when Zack Snyder is given source material or a script that he has to stick to, it kind of works out. You know, Dawn of the Dead is really good because James Gunn wrote the script. You know, uh, Watchmen is, is pretty damn good interpretation because it's pretty faithful to the Alan Moore adaptation and stuff like that. 300, a lot of people like that. Pretty damn faithful to the original Frank Miller source material there. But then when you get to Man of Steel, when you get to like a sucker punch, when you get to like fucking Batman versus Superman and it's Zack Snyder's interpretation of these characters, it all fucking falls down because there's no foundational elements of who the characters are even supposed to be just to begin with. He's almost like the Tom fucking King of directors to where you're not going in there and you're not seeing who Superman is. You're not seeing who Batman is. You're seeing the weird twisted version that Zack Snyder wishes Superman was or wishes Batman was. Just like when you read a Tom King book, we're not reading about Wonder Woman right now. That is not Diana Prince. If you read the book, you're not going to really like it. But if you want to know how Tom King saw his mother, that's the comic book you're actually reading. Would that work in an independent book without the name Wonder Woman? I don't really think so. But just like in the case of Tom King, Tom King fans like that Wonder Woman book. Wonder Woman fans hate it. In the case of Zack Snyder, Zack Snyder fans love Man of Steel. Superman fans, not so much. Zack Snyder fans love Batman versus Superman. But Batman and Superman fans hate that fucking movie because he does not get the core concepts of the characters themselves. Even Dan Slott himself, the, one of the biggest turds in the entire comic book industry. Yes, he had a very prolonged run on Amazing Spider-Man that was not very good until the very end. There's some highs in there, but even Dan Slott, notable moron in the comic book industry, had to speak out and clap back at Zack Snyder on thread, stating, it's nice to have Batman be someone who never kills or uses a gun, could that kind of character function in the real world? When you reach that point of examining the character, things like where would he park the Batmobile and how can he still be pretty boy Bruce Wayne while getting a million stitches everywhere? All of that falls apart too. It's okay to have the character be unrealistic and have the never kills, never uses guns part of his character locked in. Sticking to a code where he doesn't kill makes him a stronger character, not a weaker one especially when killing is the easier choice. Even Dan Slott is taking Zack Snyder to school when it comes to superheroes. And one of the interesting things he, he makes there where it's hard to maintain your moral clarity or maintain your personal code, and Batman absolutely has a personal code, one of the more interesting elements of Watchmen, and one of the reasons I think Rorschach is a really compelling character, is because despite how dirty that world is, and despite the lengths that those heroes go to in a pretty fucked up version of a superhero universe where they take shortcuts and they use their powers for their own gain and all that kind of stuff, Rorschach, while not the nicest guy in the world, and he certainly does kill people, and I wouldn't call him a superhero. In fact, he's referred to as a mask or whatever. You know, he's a vigilante kind of character. He is the focal point and the most important character in the universe because he's the only one that never deviates from his personal code. And that's why the character is so relatable and why when you read the story, even though you're not supposed to like him, Alan Moore clearly didn't like the character, you are drawn to him. And he, being Zack Snyder, is completely fucking oblivious. It went right over his head of why 
those core elements of Rorschach make him essentially timeless to where you can have a universe that's so twisted and so dirty and so weird and fundamentally wrong but he maintains the core principles of who he is, and that makes him a standout character in the same way that Batman does. That despite just how dirty and grimy Gotham is and just how crime-ridden it is and how much easier it would be for Batman to go out there and exact justice in a very violent, murderous kind of way, that would be the shortcut. That would be breaking his own moral imperatives. That would be not learning the lesson of his parents' death. That's why there is a clear delineation and line drawn in the sand when it comes to murder with Batman. And that's what makes the character special because it is a core element of who Batman is. You know, when Zack Snyder's like, oh, that's just how fucking versions see it. A bunch of versions sleeping in their mama's basement who don't understand what real superheroes are. No, no, no. You don't understand what real superheroes are. Superman wouldn't go out there and charge a country money for saving the day and, you know, putting down a war and all that kind of stuff. Batman wouldn't just go out there and murder all of his enemies. You know, he wouldn't do all the shortcuts that you personally would do. And that doesn't make you a bad person because if you had that kind of power, you would abuse it. What it means is we should all aspire to be better people. Do I want to be Batman? Not particularly. I feel like he's a little bit too obsessed with his vow. I feel like he's a little bit too obsessed with justice that will likely never come and he's basically fighting an unending journey that he can probably never win. But I do think I would like to be more like Superman because he seems to be a pretty damn well-adjusted character that always has his eye on the moral imperative and doing the right thing in all situations. Now, have there been weird takes on Superman in the past? Has Superman killed? I remember seeing a cover where he's going to throw a guy into a helicopter if he didn't give him information. Yes, there have been weird things that have happened with Superman. There is 80 years of storytelling associated with the character, but that shit has been firmly rejected, not only by the readers, but by the creators and is it really a part of what we think of when it comes to Superman? Has Batman ever had a gun? Absolutely. Has Batman murdered somebody? Yes, within comic books, Batman has murdered somebody. But that is not a core element of who the character is at this point. And the sooner Zack Snyder gets over that, the better. Because this dude just does not get superheroes and he continues to fuck this whole thing up. And I did appreciate Grant Morrison, Graham Nolan, Mark Miller, and even Dan Slott speaking out on this guy is out of his fucking mind. He just doesn't get superheroes. Something I've been stating many times in the past, and people always argue with me. I just don't get it. If you would like more awesome takes on superhero movies and comic books and the universes and video games and all that stuff, I do want to invite you to come over and check out the Patreon because there's a lot more stuff going on around comic books than I'm just able to cover here on the YouTube. A lot more informal kind of conversations, podcasts especially, eight hours of brand new content on the Patreon every single week, over 32 hours a month. Definitely check that out. There's a link in the video description.